Welcome back to the CSS Grid course. I'm Zach and this is part of my full stack roadmap series where you're going from never having written a line of code to deploying an e-commerce app with React. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the description below for the series playlist. That'll also kind of put these flex uh, or CSS grid videos in order for you. You can also check out this video which introduces the series. Up to this point in the CSS grid uh, course, we have covered pretty much all of the basics except for one last thing, and that is how do we align things at the grid level. So far, we've looked at uh, scenarios where the grid itself is always the same size as the grid container. But if we were to explicitly set the grid size to be smaller than the grid container, we have two more properties that are going to help us align that grid within its container. We should be able to cover this pretty quick and then we'll get into a challenge. So I'm gonna put up this, this little design on the screen and your goal is gonna be to create this with CSS grid. But anyways, let's see how we can align grids themselves. So all we have to do to see this in action is come up to our grid definition. So this is our explicit grid definition and what we've done is we've given an eight by eight grid with equal units within that grid. We still wanna have equal units just so we're working with you know, nice numbers. But what if I change the one fractional unit to uh, something smaller? So we know that the total available space within our container is going to be 300 by 300. I explained that in the first uh, video of this series give it a width and height of 310 by 310, border of five pixels, five times two, two borders on each side is 10. So our total available space, according to border box, box sizing, which we have set right here, is going to be 300 pixels. If we have 300 pixels of space in eight units, 37 and a half pixels is how wide and tall each unit's gonna be. So if we create each unit to be less than that value, so let's say we wanted each to be 25 pixels, then the whole grid is not gonna fill the grid container space of 300 pixels. All we have to do here is come into the one fractional unit and change it to 25 pixels. And now we only have 25 pixels uh, eight times over for a total of, I guess, 200 pixels. So that's our height now. And then if we take the columns and also put in 25 pixels, we get the same thing. And as of right now, we have things spilling out of their containers because we have explicit widths and heights on our grid items. So let's comment these out for just a moment. And now you can see that our grid is sitting smaller than the total grid container, which is this outline right here. And if you were to uh, come over to the dev tools and hover over this, you can see and then we're also gonna uncheck the line numbers just so you can see it a little more clearly in this case. The line numbers are gonna be great for knowing where your items are going on the grid, um, but when we're talking about the grid alignment, we don't need them. I'm gonna get rid of the other alignment so that we can just focus on this. So we'll get rid of this, uh, justify self, we'll get rid of the justify items and align items, and now everything is gonna take up their full grid area within the grid. So the question is, I've got this grid here, it's within our bordered grid container, how do I put it smack dab in the middle? The way that I can do that is a container level set of properties, and what they're called is justify content, and we'll put that as center, and then align content, we'll put that as center as well. After we do that, you'll see this kind of cross-hatched area. This is what we consider to be the implicit grid. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. As you can see though, if I uncheck the grid container, you'll see that those grid, the actual grid itself is centered within our grid container. Once again, if you'd like to find out what properties or values are possible here, you can always search that on MDN documentation. So we can say justify content, which we know about a little bit from the Flexbox tutorial. We used it there for uh, aligning content on the main axis. But when we're working with grid, it, it behaves a little differently and you can read through these different items to see how it behaves. But generally, the same values apply. 
let's now bring this full circle and layer on the justify items and we'll put that to center and align items and we'll put that to center. So what that's doing, it shrunk everything to the content size. Let's bring back some widths and heights. Right now, 200 pixels is gonna be way too big. Um, since our grid area is from one to seven, that means that there's six little grid cells. Each grid cell, as we defined above, is explicitly 25 pixels. So if you did 25 times six, what is that, 150? Yeah, I believe it's 150. And we can go ahead and set the width and height, not to 200, but maybe to 100 to fit it within. So we'll say 100 pixels, and now it's gonna be centered within that grid area. And then we come down here and maybe we'll set this since we have two little cells, 25 each, that's 50. Um, let's set this to be equal to maybe like 45 or something. And you can see it's kind of centered within that grid area. I'm gonna change the 100 to 120 because it was perfectly fitting there. Now you can really see if this is the grid area that we've defined, it's, it's perfectly centered. At this point, we have the condition set up to where we can just move things around really quickly and easily. We've got justify content center. Maybe we wanted the whole grid to go to the end, to the far right. We can say end, and that's what's gonna happen. Um, align content center. Maybe we wanted that also to be at the end, so the whole grid goes to the end, uh, the bottom right corner. Now maybe we want justify items to, uh, to hug the left side of their grid areas. So we'll put in a value of start here and those will both jump over. And then we'll keep the align item center so that they're vertically kinda uh, centered within their grid area. Say we wanted to override one, so grid item number two. Um, let's make this even smaller, like 20 pixels so we can really see it being centered down there. Um, that's a little little small. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do 30. There we go. That's a little clearer to look at. And say that we wanted to uh, take that one item and perfectly center it. Type in justify self center and align self center. And now that one's centered, but this one is hugging the left side and centered vertically. Congratulations, you just made it through the basics of CSS Grid. We have plenty more to talk about and it's gonna start getting really fun here once we start talking about intermediate uh, CSS Grid. But before we get there, I wanna finish this video off with a very short little grid challenge. On my screen is the final result that I want you to create and in the description to this video, I have links to these CodePen documents and what I've done is provided you with a starter. So this is your starting point. And what I want you to do is turn this into this design right here. So go ahead, pause the video, use your Googling skills, uh, use those cheat sheets that I showed you earlier in the course a couple videos ago, and try to finish this challenge on your own. But before you start, if you've liked this uh, video and this entire course, please subscribe please like the video, it really helps me out and it's completely free to you. All right, good luck with your challenge, I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, let's get started with the challenge. Here's what we're trying to create and what it looks like to me is there is, uh, you could of course inspect this with the dev tools and see exactly how I built it, but we're not gonna cheat like that. Um, it looks like it's three by three, looks like everything is relatively equal and we have three rows and three columns. So that's the basic definition of the grid. Let's go to our starter file and see if we can't create that with what we've got here. So here's the grid container. Style's defined on here, but we can actually, like I did earlier, we can just put everything related to CSS grid at the very top and it should work fine. So the first thing that we need to do, and this may seem obvious, but you may forget to do it and wonder what's going on. So we'll say display grid. That's going to activate grid in the first place and it's going to by default stretch those items to fill the, their grid areas and container. I want a three by three grid with equal quadrants. To do that, 
I say grid template rows, and I want to repeat three times one fractional unit, and then I want to copy that down and do the same thing for the columns. Now it's time to open up our dev tools. We'll use this for the rest of the time here. So if we click on grid container, and then we show the line numbers, uh, it's a little bit off here. Once again, this is because of that padding. So just bump up your body padding to 7% or something like that. Uh, looks like we might even, okay, there we go. So now these, now these markers are in a better spot. If we go back, we can see how these are all aligned. So the first item looks like it has two columns wide, one row tall. Let's do that. So all we have to do is select that individual style. We could do it down here, that would be fine. But like I said, we're gonna keep all of the grid related properties up here. So GI-1, grid item one. So we will put in grid row start of one because we want it to start at the top and then grid row end to be two because we just want it one tall. It's already that by default, but it's good to kind of explicitly tell it that. Now we'll say grid column start will also be one because we want it in the top left corner and grid column end is gonna be three because we want it to span to the third line. So number one is in a perfect position. Number two is in the wrong position. We need to kind of swap these out. So two needs to come where three is. So we'll come down grid item number two. The row start is gonna be two because we wanna start it one row down. And then we want it to be one row tall. So we'll put the end value to three. And then I guess it's optional whether you define the columns because it's already taking up that one uh, kind of grid cell. So we'll just leave it off for now. Finally, grid item number three is going to take up that entire right column. So we'll say grid row start is going to be one. Grid row end is going to be four. And a little trick that you could use uh, that you might often see in other people's code is you can start it at one and end it at negative one you'll see that the result is the same because negative one represents the final row line within that container. Since I want this tutorial to be as clear as possible, I'm gonna keep it as four, just so that we really can see what's happening. And then of course we have our grid column start, which is gonna be equal to three, and grid column end is gonna be equal to four. And it was already there, just kind of how things were arranged, the natural flow, but good to explicitly uh, show that. And if we close the dev tools and look at our grid, it looks very similar. It looks like we solved this okay. The last thing that I wanna do in this solution is show you a few of those shorthand properties. Um, I've been holding off on showing these. I kind of said we're not gonna touch them, but it is cool to see um, how we can simplify our CSS and do it a little bit more efficiently. To better visualize the shorthand properties of grid, I created this little mind map. You can find it in the post. Um, it should be in the, the description, some link down there uh, to this little visual. And if you look at the properties that we have used in our challenge, so this is, yeah, this is the one we just did. And you can see that we're using a lot of repetitive things here. So grid row start, row end, column start, and column end. And if we come back to our visual here, so let me get these tabs worked out. Um, you can see that grid row start, column start, row end, and column end is all um, kind of summarized in the grid area property. So if we wanted to, we could just replace these four declarations with one single CSS property, which is grid area. So it goes row, it goes start, start, end, end, and it goes from row to column. So remember that, and we'll come down here and we'll say grid area. And so we've already got them lined up. So we're basically just going in order and we're gonna put in one, four, three, four. And I think you have to separate these by uh, slashes like this. 
And then if we comment these out, so let's comment all of these out and we'll put in grid area as the shorthand property. And all you have to do is just go down this line. So row start, row end, column start, and column end. And we'll type the values we had before. So one, four, three, four. And now we should get this updating. And it's not because I'm not thinking. You have to put little slashes between each of these. And it's not working because I think I have these out of order. Uh, I don't have these memorized myself. I probably should. But this is uh, what I just pasted in here is the order of the longhand properties that we need to place in here. So first we need row start, which is a one. Got that one, okay. Then we need column start, which is three. So we need to throw a three in there. Then we need row end, which is a four. So let's put in our four there. And then the last value that we would need is uh, column end, which is four, it's already in there. So we can get rid of all that. And now we have a simplified shorthand property that takes care of all of that for us. So let's copy this same thing in here, just so that we have it as a guide for each of these additional grid items. And then we can start replacing these with grid area. So row start is one, column start is one, row end is two, column end is three. We can delete that and nothing should change. And then down here, we can set the grid area and say the row start is two, um, the row Column start is gonna be three. We didn't define that up there. And then if we wanna leave something blank, so we didn't have column start up here, you can just put another slash. And then we want row end, which is three. And then you don't need that final one either. So that should put it in the right spot. Honestly, it would be probably easier just to define these two if you wanted to, but uh, since we're simplifying, that is fine. And now you can see if we just remove out all these comments that are cluttering up the code, you'll see how simple that is to define the grid area for each of these items. We'll see if we can simplify anything else. So I think the one thing, um, grid template. So we've defined the template column and template rows. Template area, uh, we'll get to that in the intermediate CSS grid, but for now, Let's just replace that and see what we can do. So if we just say grid template, and then we place this value here two times and delete this, I think we should get the same exact answer. And we do. So you can actually replace that simple, those two declarations with this one. So this would be the shorthand way to solve this challenge. Um, it's a relatively simple challenge in general, but hopefully you enjoyed it and learn something from it. In the next series of videos, I'm not sure how many it's gonna be yet, but we're gonna be covering some intermediate CSS grid, and I would definitely recommend sticking around because it starts to get pretty fun once we add in like grid template areas and uh, the explicit versus implicit grid and all that good stuff. And then once again, we have this project to look forward to. This will kind of be our capstone CSS grid project. I'll show you how to build this after we get through the intermediate parts of CSS Grid. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.